Hi, Anarchy Shadows here, and today I'm going to be doing a other character build for Skyrim. Now, today's character I'm going to be doing is Orikaf the Nomad. Now, the race of orcs from Skyrim is quite closely linked to that of the Mongols, which were the Siberian slash Asian. Uh, they're, they're a warrior tribe that Genghis Khan was the leader of. And they conquered basically the whole of Asia and up to a bit of Europe. And they were one of the most successful warrior factions to ever exist. Uh, Genghis Khan himself has so many offspring that his DNA can be traced just by itself rather than as part of a group. And <laughs> he's kind of like, well, he, he did very few people, but it basically he just conquered the entire of Asia. And he was very good at it. And he worked as part of a tribe of horse riding Mongols. Now, they, they did most of their combat on horses. Which is why this character, you're going to want the convenient horses mod. To um, basically have the best experience with horses in the game. And the similarities between the, um, the Mongols and the Orcs is that... The Orcs in Skyrim are incredibly warrior-based. They have like the best warrior stats, it says in the description that there's no finer warrior and heavy armor, which is similar. Although in real life there, weren't, there were very few heavy armored people, because what they would consider heavy armor would be just slightly thicker leather, and that kind of thing, so it does kind of change it a bit. But for this character, you're going to want to be as warlike as physically possible. And for this, I've got a fur hood, and I'll just check. Yeah, banded iron armor, fur hood, and then iron armor and gauntlets. Just to give a generally, it doesn't have to be so much of a like uniform set, which is hence the hood. The hood doesn't give any light armor protection. So it's basically just going to be your heavy arm stats that you need. And I did make this character incredibly tall. It's not accurate to life. There is no one here to compare me against, sadly. But my character is is 1.2 of the original human height. Hold on, if I that didn't work. Okay, that's not working. There we go. That's him standing upright, and that's me. So as you can see, there's a big difference. He is slightly slouched, but essentially, I made this character really big just to give him a very intimidating look. I gave him the perks for intimidation as well, I believe. And I just made him generally quite a violent looking person, just to add to that added warrior tribe look. Although in real life, the Mongols were actually an average of 5.8 no, 5.5, .5, sorry, so quite short as it goes, because they were an Asian tribe and a lot of the Asian countries tend to have shorter people just naturally. So they would have been like tall compared to the others, but still not that tall compared to European people. Now for this character, you're going to want to get the convenient horses, and then with this you can get the horse call ability. You can also get a horse whistle ability, but I think the horse call looks way cooler on this character. Okay, I'm gonna need to tell my horse to fuck off, so... No, I'll, I'll go the other side of the water then, I'll go on So if I just hop into the water here. This character's incredibly slow, by the way, which kind of fits. All right, and what you do now is you use your horse core ability, same way you do a shout. Ah, oh, fuck, I don't want him to come back. I bet you there is a crab somewhere. Slaughterfish. Even worse. Okay. Alright. No enemies. Alright, I'll watch this shit. Okay, so basically what it does is it just summons your horse and makes you automatically get onto them. And that is going to be incredibly useful because it's very hard to track where your horse is. Especially when you yourself are going to travel quite a bit. And you may go in and out of areas. Like you might go through a building to get to the other side where it's still Skyrim. And then you can summon your horse again. It's going to be very nice. 
And the ma the main weapons of the the um, Mongols are their bow. Now they have a composite bow of some sort, and it will be recurved, which means it's got some like curve to it, rather than being multiple curves, rather than just the one. And it's very difficult to fire an arrow on a horse. I I realise that, which is why you're gonna want to get some sort of um, HUD display, so something that edits how easy it is to to get your like vision, your field of view will change, making it as easy as possible. It's still going to be a rather much an uphill battle. You can only shoot forwards, and that's going to be kind of awkward because the Mongolians themselves will be very good with horse-based combat. They'll be trained from birth, whereas from a player perspective, not being able to see things in first person makes it very difficult. I'm pretty sure you can find mods which will fix this, but I don't know, I haven't found one yet. So a lot of this is going to rely on you just outmaneuvering. I set the horse to be a mortal, which both means that I don't have to worry about it getting killed and then go buy a new horse, and it also means I can jump from any height while on my horse and hit the ground fine. You see, because it made the, the death sound, because it triggered the death thing, but then it just stays alive. Which is very neat. But sadly, even with the focus, it's going to be very difficult. Which means this may get some getting used to. I'm at level 20 right now, and I'm still having a bit of trouble with this form of archery. Especially when I'm trying to concentrate on talking. And that guy shot me in the face. So I'm probably going to leave this area. This character would ordinarily be... If, if I'm like really in the zone, I can probably use the burn arrow better. But that is something to bear in mind with this character. That archery on the horseback is a very bad combo. Unless you happen to be one of the Mongol warriors. In which case you'll be fine. fine. And this character has a lot of close range capabilities which do kind of make up for that, although they're not completely law friendly. Because, I mean, they would have close range weapons, there's not a single group in history that's not had some sort of close range weapon, because that's the easiest to do. And as you can see, I do some serious damage, I take some serious damage, I'm just generally a tank, and I have that ability which I just wasted, which was, you have a, like, stun jump, now this character you might end up in difficult fights relying a lot on your ability to stun the opponents. So if you get on your horse, you can actually ram people over if you sprint using your horse and hit into someone. And that will stun them and do a bit of damage. So that would be a quite effective way to knock, o to knock over people and get them out of combat. So I did end up for one bit when I was getting like bored with the a bit pissed with the difficulty of using bow and arrow. I just ended up essentially just um, ramming into people to kill them. And that will actually work pretty well in terms of combat. Now this character, although it may seem like using a bow on a horse is incredibly difficult, it is also incredibly rewarding, because if you get it right, I, there was one bit where I'm using uh, immersive creatures, so there are a lot more different creatures. And there are like elder giants, where they're like attack on titan size, really badass ones. And I can actually manage to take those out without dying, which is pretty damn good. And so I've got a level up here. Alright, so seeing as it's a level up, I'll just take time to show you my perks. Okay, so I, d I don't have the speechcraft perk, I thought I did. I do have a high level in it though, and also with the disparity mod, it means the um, the bigger you are, the more likely you are to scare and to intimidate the opponent. All right, so for these stats, I tend to stay fairly accurate. So I've got 50 in marksmanship. That's that should be higher, really, but it's as I said, it's quite difficult. So sometimes you end up having to resort to using your light weaponry. Especially if you're being swarmed by wolves or that kind of thing. The small animals are annoying. But anyway, so you got the longbow perks because the bows they used were on the longbow range of things. And you got the eagle eye and the city hand just to make it marginally easier. 
to like aim. And then you've also got these two just for added bonus, they're not particularly interesting. And then for your weaponry. Now on horseback you can only use your primary weapon out of your two. So for you that's gonna be um, like actually get to first person mode. Alright, where are they? I hate I hate using first person mode for the fact that it's just really hard to see your peripherals. So anyway, so I've got, in one hand I've got a Tanto, which is going to represent your id blade. So they had a blade where essentially, the, theirs would be a lot more curved than this, because this is a very straight blade, because the Tanto is essentially just a straight blade with a slight curve at the edge, whereas their one would be a, a lot more curved. But I couldn't find one that was equivalent in terms of length, that was like, because this, this wields very similar to how the id blade would wield. And then in the other hand, I did go off it. Have a mace of some sort. Now, for your character, you're going to be worshipping the god of um, war, or god of dominance, I believe. Which is... I forget his name. The guy in the horror house quest. In Morpho, you go up to the guy, and he says, oh, there's this ghost in the house. And then you you meet the god of dominance, and he gives you his club. That's essentially like a really powerful. Oh fuck. Um, it's a really powerful uh, club that does damage to health, magicka, and so on. I believe it's all free. And that's going to be your best bet because essentially there's this system where a lot a lot of tribes have this kind of system where a different item will denote how good you are at particular things, like your status. And for the for the Mongols, it would be how many how decorative your club was, because obviously if you're richer within the society, you will be able to afford better weaponry, for obvious reasons. And then that adds up to being Yeah, you, know, you got um Damn, I'm very close to dying here. Yeah, sometimes you can get a bit overwhelmed in battle, but less so than any everyone else, but it's just because you don't really have much of a tactical advantage of people. Especially with these bleeding weapons. When I say bleeding weapons, I mean literally weapons that could that can cause bleeding damage, not, not weapons which are annoying me. Although it is annoying me now. Um, but essentially, for this character, you want to get the nicest club you can come across, but until you're of status, you don't need to, so you just stick with sign. Like I'm currently using the steel one, and I'm actually just going to toggle god mode, even though that is cheating, just because I don't want to like reload an old save, and I don't particularly want to do it. But essentially, you're going to dual wield, and that's where you've got your perks. I got it. Perks. You've got the perks. Uh, Florentine Combat, I believe they call it. Yeah, Florentine Combat, and then obviously you'll get the Grandmaster one because that adds a bit of effectiveness to it. And essentially, what this tree here is this is for dual wield, which you'll be using as long as you're not on horseback. And striking an enemy just as he would hit you, his attack does, does no damage, only when dual wielding. And that is what you're going to use to essentially. Avoid taking damage when you're hitting people, which is going to be very neat for you. Uh, yeah. Reducing credit. In incoming stamina and st st stagger, even. That's going to be helpful. And essentially, that Florentine combat's going to mean if you time it right, you get an extra, like, basically, their, their attack does nothing, meaning. That, that's something that happens a lot where, because in Skyrim the fight and combat system is a bit broken in the way that when you hit someone else, they'll hit you at the same time and you just kind of hit each other and there's no like parrying. But now, with your ability, you can kind of parry. Well, it won't look like you've parried, but their attack will do no damage, so it's like you've blocked it with your sword. And that's going to be very neat. And hopefully it will give you some sort of an advantage. You can also, if you want, do some sneak archery. 
You're, you're probably going to end up, what will happen is you'll be sneaking, and then as you shoot them, they'll all notice, because you're not going to be that heavily... There's n literally no like upgrades for Snake, this character. So there you go here. It's just going to be... What level am I? Yeah, I'm level 8. Which I realise is lower than the starting level, but that's because I'm doing a different system. Which was, I believe, part of disparity. But I may be wrong. And... Alright, so... We've got light armour. No, light weapons. Marksmanship. So... That's pretty accurate for there. And then heavy armor. Now, as I said before, heavy armor in the real world is a lot lighter than you expect. So it's mostly fur and that kind of thing. But I gave this character a mixture of fur and actually like iron plates, which is fairly accurate. And that's going to give you some serious damage protection. And then also smithing, which is just useful. It's one of the things which orcs are particularly renowned for, so I thought I might add it in. And it also gives you the ability to craft both fur hoods for, for this armor, so the hood I'm currently wearing. And then also craft the armor itself. Well, actually, you could craft that anyway, but it just means that you're going to have a better level in it. And then you can also, if you want to go for a less... A less um, historically accurate one, but a slightly more Skyrim accurate, accurate one. You might want to actually craft some orcish armor, which would, you know, give you a lot more defenses, but make you slightly slower. You're going to be slow anyway. You're, you're some sort of, you're very much like a towering brute character, which I guess makes sense somewhere. Although, that is actually going to be one of the good things, because if your character is incredibly slow, it doesn't matter if you're on a horse. So you play with a character who's actually pretty much just the slowest kind of person. Like, you have to constantly sprint, or use power attacks to move yourself along, otherwise you just get really bored. Like, this is slow as hell. I, I think it looks less slow when you're watching it, but playing it is quite slow. So essentially, that's going to be an incredibly slow character, but then you've got your horse power, and I can't use it right now, because there's a person. But you can use your horse to basically... You've got the characters incredibly bulky, incredibly slow, and then you just summon a horse for them, and it makes it so that they are still got their incredibly bulky defences. The horse isn't going to take any damage, because it's mortal, so that means all the damage is still going to be the same onto you. Meaning you've basically just got a faster version of the original character. And also another perk that you've got, light armor. That's light weapon reading. You've got this perk up here, which is Tanto. Tanto attacks, no it's Hornet Sting. Tanto attacks that hit the enemy's side or back and deal 25% more damage. Now the Tanto is the weapon you hold in your right hand, so that one, there you go, rather helpfully holding it out there. And that weapon is going to do more damage against the sides of enemies, which means in terms of on-horse combat, you can do a lot of outmaneuvering your opponents, which is pretty much what you're going to end up doing with this character anyway. Whether, or, whether you're using your bow or your sword, you're going to want to outmaneuver people. And that means you can get a lot of good... You, your chance of getting a crit is quite high, because you they'll face you and then you just go to the side of them rather than directly at them. Or, alternatively, you can ram straight into them and then it will, incre it will have the um, ram effect and it will knock them out of the way and they'll go into a ragdoll mode. And then they'll end up being to the side of you anyway. Which means you like you have draw them directly into crit's position. All right, so this guy's gonna. Yes, I realize I've left God no. and I don't know if that worked. But I did sprint into them. Oh yeah, see that guy just got off. And okay, so that killed him in one hit. I'd like to just to draw your attention to part of the convenient horses mod, which is the auto gather from a horse. 
So as soon as I killed him, it brought up his item menu. And this is going to be incredibly helpful. It's going to fit with the characteristics of the of the um, Mongols, which is you want to be on your horse as much as possible. So to have you just automatically open your menu means you both get to stay on your horse the whole time. And it also gives you some sort of incentive for hunting. Because it means you can just automatically open the menu for that animal while using a bow. Which makes, it does cut out a lot of the wasted time. And that is going to be an incredibly useful thing for your character. I'd highly recommend using that mod. That's the convenient horses one. Which is basically what this character revolves around. As for limitations in this character. While the Mongols were incredibly good in combat. They weren't exactly scholarly in any way, shape or form. So for this character I'd recommend for an authentic build. Go go about it without um, reading anything other than like quest items. So don't read any of those books which level up your skills. Just give you some sort of artificial cap. Because otherwise this character will just become completely wrecking. And then also for this character... Although it doesn't have to be like a complete rule, I wouldn't recommend lockpicking anything because your character's not going to need that kind of thing. Because if you want something, you're not going to steal it, you're going to kill them and then take it off their bodies. So you don't really need to... I, don't, I hate the way when you go into water, your horse just cuts it off. But anyway, so you won't need all of those... Um, you won't need lockpicking skills, so just don't even have any lockpicks in the first place. I haven't picked any up, so I'm not even tempted to do it. And that's going to give your character some ways to make them slightly less OP with their bulkiness. Granted, they're not going to be like immortally bulky as you saw before. And as for investment on stats, all in health. And then I have. Wait, sorry. All in health, so 355. And then. I have items which boost my stamina, just to make me slightly quicker, because otherwise you're going to get really pissed off by that. So that, that stamina is also going to be useful in combat. And actually just now, while we, while we have the time, I'm just going to show you my ability, which is one of the things I was talking about, about stagger. So see this... Mud crab here. I need to get it to get out of the water. It's really annoying me. Okay, I think I can do it from here. Right. Okay, so see, I made like a cloud and there was... So, well, essentially that has like a, I believe... I'm going to say it's around 70% chance, because it does sometimes fail, but it's not that often. So yeah, it's about like 75, 80-ish percent chance of staggering opponents and it can stagger as many as are near you but it's only a very short radius and that's going to be that's going to give you a slight advantage in a well it's actually going to give you a really good advantage in close combat because you can run into the battlefield stagger everyone there you go now you've got loads of people who are no longer attacking you i'm pretty sure the ram thing's been disabled you've got loads of people who are no longer attacking you and you can just kind of attack them until you're done and I'm pretty sure, yeah, I, I need to check this okay. so if I go into mod configurations, convenient horses you, you, you should look out a lot horse charge yeah, um yeah, so horse charge is enabled Okay, so I don't know what that was about. So for some reason I wasn't able to ram this goat even though I was sprinting at it. I think it just kind of avoided me. So anyway, I can't find an example of it because for some reason that goat is incredibly good at dodging things. But if you want to... Um, ram into someone and you'll stagger them so you can spend a lot of time just staggering opponents and then you can get some damage out of them yeah so that person just kind of shrugged off I'm not sure what's up with that 
I think people are just too good at dodging. You know we need two sons and oh no, sorry. I, I need to correct myself here. It only works if they've already like selected you as an enemy, just to prevent you from like knocking over your friends and stuff. So by there you yeah. If they're pissed at me, then I can go around and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh damn, cross them. Yeah, there you go. As you see, that took a good chunk of health, not ridiculous. And you can get some ridiculous levels of ramming people out there. So I just rammed like eight people in a row, and that's... It does no damage unless you already have damage to health, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. Or there's like a percentage chance to gain damage. You can edit all of this. So if you want, you can make it like an insta-kill thing. You can make it so it has a chance to knock over people, but it's not 100%. But I like to have it so that it always knocks them over. And always there's a little bit of damage, but not too much. Uh, so just, I'm pretty sure I just used the preset one, but I'm pretty happy with that. And yeah, so I almost killed them with three hits over, I believe. And then you can go in for the kill with your little Tanto thing. That'll be pretty neat. So anyway, that's going to be kind of your your most irritating for the opponent's aspects of your character, and that that's going to give you some outmaneuvering abilities. I'm just going to let them all swarm around me, so you can get a good idea of what the chances are of them getting knocked over. There you go. So three of the six got knocked over. And the uh, two of them got like into the crouching bit, but they didn't go the full way. So it had like the it had the full Vusrudar effect on some, and then it staggered the others. So it's not too bad. Wait, when did the last one come to light? Anyway, so that's basically going to be it for this character. You've got a lot of staggering opponents to make them stay down, and. Then you're gonna just kind of whittle them away with not incredible attacks after that, even though you're like level 80. So if you look, that guy, two hits. This guy, blocking, is gonna take more, obviously. Yeah, it's basically a two hit kill on you these people. He's gonna be one hit because he's got no arm. And they're also gonna be one hit because they're half. Yeah, so you're a two hit kill on most things. Which both means if there's only a few people in the battle, you're pretty much going to dominate it, and there's going to be no way they can stop that. But it also means that if you're in a situation in which the enemies are surrounding, like right now, if I was currently not in god mode, I would be dead. Which is why you then use your bow from a distance. I'll, sh I'll show you what that looks like, because I haven't actually used the bow in on land. No, not on land, it's just not on land. And that's going to be two hits. We're aiming for two hits. I don't know how this one is. There we go. And then we'll get this person from over here. Ah, damn it, moved out of the way. There's a very good dodge on their part. Pretty sure that's part of Skyrim Redone, but they like, dodge properly. But either way, that was pretty good. I don't know why this, this arrow just seems to be disappearing. So you do get flinched a bit when you use the bow and arrow, especially on a horse. I find that that a lot of the time when you're on the horse, your flinching is going to be very irritating. Because this crossbow person is causing me to flinch a lot. And now that there's someone with an axe actually on me, that's, that's going to be at ridiculous levels of flinching. Which is making it very difficult. There you go. So that was how much damage it did. So that was a quick draw. It wasn't too long. So as I said, it was a long bow, so it does take longer to draw. But I'm only, what, yeah, one on the power draw. I could go two, but I just want that much damage. That's fairly, that's okay, just two hits to kill. That guy's immortal, which is why he's not bad. But anyway, I can pretty much do two hits with any of my weapons is a kill, and that's pretty, pretty decent for a bulky character. 
He's not gonna be like a stealth character, so you don't you don't need to worry if it's not insta kills. And that is basically it for this character. I hope you enjoy the design. I ho I hope it's it's pretty accurate to them in real life. The armor's a bit off, the proportions are a bit off, but I tried to make it as close. The weaponry is pretty accurate. So anyway. This was Anarchy Shadows with another tutorial for a, char a character build for a Mongol warrior slash orc. I hope you enjoyed this, so I'll be doing another one next week. I also have like a proper schedule sorted out, so that'll be Mondays character builds, Tuesdays Pokemon doubles battles, Wednesdays would be just something random, Thursdays is cards. Fridays is an indie game, and then Saturdays is my art. So that is going to be my new tutorial, my new schedule. Do check out some of my videos, and anyway, like and subscribe. See you next time.